I would like to explain to you I'm going to Ampere's law I'm going to present to you this is a remember you are now you are interested in calculating magnetic fields right around wires carrying current and we wanna like something a little bit more powerful than Biot-Savart law since Biot-Savart law is kind of tricky right since we have to describe this vector product here and sometimes actually finding this infinitesimal length here and these unit vectors is not so is not going to be so easy remember what he did right remember that when we were there in the first lecture uh, we can find actually the net electric field to any distribution of charge by writing right the, the differential the differential electric field d right in this case for example right we can actually write these infinitesimal elements d and then by integration right most of the time we use integration to summon to sum to add up all the contributions and actually find the total field when it's too complicated right for example like this case here no no this case is okay you, you can compute by hand right but when it's too complicated then we use a computer to do that we just divide in very small portions very 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 small portions and then we add it up using the computer it's still the same right doesn't matter so this was the first technique that you learned the other way guys right of calculate for example for this line of charge the other way that you have to do we can do the other method to calculate the electric field is actually using uh, Gauss law remember that we learned there we, we can actually apply using in this case like cylindrical symmetry we can apply Gauss law here hey my integral is not so nice you can apply Gauss law in this case calculating the flux right this is this closed integral here between the electric field and this differential element of area right guys what do we did so this would be like a da would be very infinitesimal actually and we know that gauss told us that this is actually one over we have this is proportional right what gauss actually saying us telling us is actually that the electric field is directly pro proportional right that's why i'm writing like this one over epsilon zero uh, times the enclosed charge and here you have this concept of gaussian surface so that means that you have uh, but the, the main point here is actually what Gauss is telling us that you have one proportionality between the electric field and the charge the enclosed charge and remember this is physics and this we're just describing the nature what what I mean with that if this is valid right if you can find Right. we have this here that was very com is very complicated to find the inter the, in the integrals for this one so this is kind of complicated we can we actually use like alternative method that is gauss method right to solve it and we know that for example that this expression says us that the electric field is directly proportional to the charge we might we may and actually we expect it for the magnetic field to have like a similar property and this is what uh, Ampere's law that's the main idea uh, behind Ampere's law so we did the same here right remember there we can calculate actually using this very complex like a uh, ve uh, vector 
to calculate the electric field, for example, for one charge here, one isolated charge in any particular point in space. Easier way to find this expression here is actually applying uh, Gauss law. We expected something similar for the magnetic field as well. So if you consider, and this is actually true, All right, guys, if we have, right, one way to calculate the magnetic field in this point here, and the first one that we, we learned was a Biot-Sarva law, but this is a little bit complicated, right? We have something, we have this expression that I just showed you before, where here, this expression here. And the question is, is there any way this can become a little bit easier? Not so complicated. Imagine like trying to, to solve this every single time. This is going to be, can be like a challenge. Well, we can expect it also that something different. We can do the same, right? We can do exactly the same here. Like we're doing this analogy, right? The first one that I show you, you can actually, you can find the, the, the net magnetic field due to caused by any distribution of charge, right? First writing these differential elements and then adding up here using the integration. And if it's too complicated, you can use a computer as well. Uh, but as I told you this, sometimes this is going to take a significant effort and Sometimes the integral is not is non trivial. It's going to be a little bit difficult. However, guys, following what we observed there for the electric field, and as I told you a priori, hey, if you have some symmetry, you definitely have something better, a little bit more robust to calculate the electric field and the the, the magnetic field. And this is actually Ampere's law. Uh, this law actually was derived from can be derived from Biot-Sarva law. I'm not going to do this. If you are interested, you can uh, look by yourself. It, the law itself was actually credited to André Marie Ampère, right? Very famous, the, the guy who is actually the unit of electric current is named after. But actually, the guy who actually developed and advanced the law was Maxwell the guy who, from Maxwell equations, yeah, he was the one and actually says that there is a easier way to calculate the, the magnetic field and this is actually using a similar concept that we use there in the electric field. You can calculate the magnetic field actually using a closed uh, uh, line integral over a closed curve that is going to be the pro the scalar product between the magnetic field and the infinitesimal length around that curve and this is going to be me sub zero times the current enclosed by this surface here that means what, what is a similar what we did for the electric field we are going to choose to f choose one surface here one curve right guys and this must be closed and this surface is called imperial Amperian Amperian loop and we are going to integrate along this curve summing and adding up for all for all infinitesimal length actually what, what do you can see here also we have to express this this uh, also you can clearly see that actually the magnetic field is going to be directly proportional to the enclosed current the current that is enclosed within the inferior loop 
I'm going to show in an example very soon. Then you have to keep in mind, again guys, we know this constant here. So this is directly proportional and the constant of proportionality is the permeability of vacuum, the magnetic constant. There are so many names, they call permeability of free space, vacuum permeability is up to you. And the, again, it's the same value that I put, uh, I just present to you like a couple minutes ago. Okay, but as you're going to see very soon, this is easier to actually to find something using uh, Ampere's law. We have some basic strategy that you have to follow to, to solve problems using Ampere's law, but as you can see, it's way easier than actually Biot-Sarva law. Let's just start, guys. Let's shall we go? Okay, let's see. And for that, I'm going to solve exactly the same problem that I solved like using Biot-Sarva law. I'm going to solve, I'm going to find the magnetic field in a point there is at a distance r from from a, a, a current carrying wire this is what i'm going to do but now i'm going to do remember we just did that and we had some not so easy integral to <laughs> to be solved so we could find and we, finally after that solving this integral we found uh, this expression here what you are going to do is actually to solve exactly the same problem using um, oh, sorry using Ampere's law here you have the wire you have the current flowing here from left to right and have this point that is located at this distance r from this here uh, let's look um, a view from this side right from the wire, the wire is right here on the center. So what you can see in red here is actually the, the electric current is actually piercing out of the plane formed by the screen. And by the right hand rule, guys, remember this one. Let's go back to show a picture. By this one, the right hand rule, we have actually the magnetic field pointing the way I just depicted here, right, in purple. So we have the magnetic field pointing uh, tangenti tangentially to to this Amperian loop that I put in orange in the counterclockwise direction. Okay, so everything is here. Again. For everything that I have to do, identify the symmetry. We have the symmetry. This symmetry is what I call in here cylindrical or polar, or polar uh, symmetry. That means that if you choose a point, any point that is distant, uh, the same distance from from the wire is going to experience exactly the same. So if you if you choose another point here, I don't know Q. Is exactly the same distance this is going to be exactly this is going to experience exactly the same magnetic magnetic field no difference that's what I'm calling that's why I'm I'm using uh, cylindrical symmetry okay so the second thing that I did right identify symmetry I we have to identify the direction of the of the magnetic field using this uh, right hand rule Right, the one that I just uh, showed you. We have to choose the path. I'm choosing this path here, guys. Of course, I'm not not crazy. I want to do the easiest as possible. We can use. I could use like I don't know, like a rectangle or something. I'm choosing a circle to be on my path because then you have distance uh, the distance is going to be constant in any direction it's going to be and it's going to be easier to represent this Amperion loop using uh, actually polar coordinates as you can are going to see before after that guys we have to remember 
the current con uh, convention. In my case, because the current is actually pointing out of the loop, right? It's coming out of the loop. This is going to be positive. I put right here. If if is not the case, right? If I have the current going in this direction, so this would be negative. But in my example here that I'm doing, this is positive, positive, positive current. Okay, and then what I'm going to do now is just calculate. I'm going to write all these elements here in polar coordinates. Let's put some line. No, no, let's let's avoid the lines. Okay, I can write these in polar coordinates, guys, and then I'm going to equate, and that's it. Look, I have the the magnetic field. This is going to be tangent tangential. So that means it has its magnitude times theta hat. If I'm considering, just to rem uh, remind you guys, if you don't rem if you don't remember, you have something like this, right? And this is theta. This is the radial direction. So we have two vector unit vectors here. One is going to be in this direction, in the radial direction. Let's see that it, let's pretend that it's good. And the other one is here in the tangential direction. This one is going to be r hat, and this one is going to be theta hat. I hope you guys remember this from from your vector calculus classes. This is kind of trivial. This is uh, uh, x. Uh, this is y direction. Actually, sorry. This is y direction. I hat right. Okay, you can write definitely. You can write b as in the tangent tangent tangential direction, and this element of length right here that is in green in my drawing here. We can write this as being also in the tangential direction. So this is the L theta hat, theta hat, and this infinitesimal length here. We can. This is basic math. I don't know primary school, not primary school. So this is going to be uh, the big R, the L. Theta hat. We can actually evaluate this product, right? This integral. So we are going to have B is color product with the L. And we are going to have B. Whoa. This is going to be this integral here. This is going to be b that is constant, r that is constant. Uh, I forgot. Uh, I forgot to mention something. It's very important to choose the ampere amperian loop uh, where the magnetic field is constant. That's how you you choose it. As long as the magnetic field is constant along that surface is perfectly fine okay guys to to calculate that and then i have here the, the theta oh this is not dl this is the theta so this is the theta and then you have this color product here between theta hat and theta hat this is going to be one if the unit vectors are the same so they are parallel this is going to be one we know this from vector calculus if you guys don't know just check the our text our textbook you can have okay and then you can rewrite this this is going to be actually br And we can calculate 
from 0 to 2 pi this integral here d theta and this is going to give me 2 pi rb and finally we can actually equate that with uh, the, um, the current enclosed by this Ampere loop and in this case the current enclosed here is uh, what I mean the current inside this Ampere loop is just I uh, it's the only one so I have actually 2 pi R B equals me zero I E and if I isolate it, if I normalize here the magnetic field by two pi R, I'm going to find that actually that B is equals to zero I. over two pi r that is exactly the same expression that we found using the Biot-Sarval law exactly the same And what is the significance of that? Well, as you can see, this is very is easier than the previous example that we did, and that's the main point here. So again, act as a fable. And of course, uh, if I want to write the vector, I would have the direction here. This would be in the theta hat direction. Let's make it pretty. Once again, act as a fable.